want to talk about what's going on in Argentina. For the last several weeks, really since the end of the Rugby World Cup, I have been saying that Argentina is about to make one of the biggest leaps. And why is that? Not only why is that it's not only just because of where they finished within the quarterfinals, in the semifinals, uh, in the Rugby World Cup, but what they're also doing in sevens. They recently won both Perth and Dubai, uh, and Cape Town 7s, back-to-back efforts. They have seen a meteoric rise in talent on their 7th side. And, of course, from their 15th side, they've continued to be able to build and be a regular powerhouse. Now, on top of that, we know about their efforts that they've done with the Jaguars uh, going, oh, I'm sorry, with the Pumas playing in the rugby championships where they even beat Australia last year, even though many people would blame that on Eddie Jones being a poor coach for Australia in that situation. But they beat Australia. They have now announced that they are returning the, back to Super Rugby with the Jaguars. Uh, they have their teams in the Dogos and the Pampas uh, that are playing strong in Super Rugby Americas. And they are constantly sending players actively into Europe. On top of the fact that there are more players now going to the Miami Shark, which I consider that as Argentina's USA professional side. So you have such a slew of talent that you have all these spread of players everywhere, and we're seeing legitimate results happening. And we know that people uh, like Gaston uh, Pichot has been very active in wanting to show not only the rise of being able to make Tier 2 better, but also to be able to show Argentina's depth and growth and just just a whole slew and it has been something that has been just a theoretical and and marvel to be able to watch and thankfully we had a great person to be able to come and be able to explain it out uh we have former uh former puma uh eusebio gunietsu who is a former uh argentina puma he played hooker for the pumas he's part of that 2017 that almost made it to the rugby world cup lost to third place france he has played for toulouse bath toulon monster and the stormers he is currently an up-and-coming uh he's currently a coach for up-and-coming players and a consultant for the argentina rugby union guys i want you guys to take a huge welcome to be able to meet to introduce yusubio ginyetsu into the program y'all please welcome give him a round of applause let's go to be here thank you for Uh, the invitation Man, I, it is an absolute pleasure. You know, um, I I I I want to get right into it. You know, I, I talk very much about how Argentina, especially at this last Rugby World Cup, continues to show the world exactly how much talent and how much it's been able to develop. Obviously, in sevens, back-to-back winners uh, right now. Uh, and has been continuing to rise. In 15, we've known that they've been in established uh, space. But what's even more impressive is now Super Rugby Americas with the Dogo and Pampas, uh, the new in- initiative to bring Super Rugby back the Jaguars and return them into the Super Rugby arena. And, of course, the number of players that are playing in top 14 in premiership. Like, Argentina is going everywhere. But the thing that has always been really confusing is Argentina's c- economy has been very, very iffy as of lately. But the sports have been on point. S- you, soccer, basketball, now rugby. So... In terms of the rugby, I kind of want to, well, get a little background of what you, you are and then talk about wh- how Argentina is doing. So if you can, can you tell us a little bit about um, where you're from and, and, and how did you get started with Argentina rugby? Well, uh, as you may know, I played for Argentina for more than 12 years. Um, I also played for a few teams in Europe, in the UK, in France, in Ireland. I played for the Stormers in South Africa as well, but seven years ago I retired and came back living to Argentina, where I was born. So I'm actually in Mendoza, Argentina, which is in the west of the country. Um, Since that day, I started working as director of rugby of my province, Um, working together with the national union in all the development and the competitions that we believe Argentina needed to grow. Oh, okay. So, so in in that, like, you know, you you're playing, 
you played through multiple rugby world cups then you've 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 been able to have that experience argentina what is the secret that argentina has been having to be able to be such a consistent powerhouse in an area that is not considered a major rugby powerhouse area you know south america is considered a strong tier two area tier three in some essence what makes argentina so special in your opinion for them to have been able to set a consistency as as a tier one nation i think the most special thing we have is our clubs in argentina we have club rugby which is not professional but it's very very tight culture wise so when we start developing the all the development of, of the high performance centers uh, we start looking for competition for annual competitions for our youngsters and our players we keep that in mind so now you can get that kind of mix like you get the guys coming up from the class with a very strong amateur culture about this what rugby means about rugby values and they get inserted in a professional setup and a high performance setup and that's a very nice mix so i think that what it what makes today argentina uh, getting better and better. The, all the things that start like maybe 10, 15 years ago when we start looking for more competition and we start thinking about how to develop our athletes and our coaches. And we went through a lot of different things. Uh, a long time ago, we got a team called the Pampas who were playing in South Africa in the Vodacom Cup and then most of those guys, they end by playing for the Pumas. Yeah. Um, then we have the Jaguares playing the Super Rugby, and that was amazing for us because we get all the people to get into rugby in a really football soccer country. So we got all the people looking to the rugby and really pay attention to it. And, um, and now we end by having a very, a very nice high performance national structure Right. which allows you to make all the players detection in a very early ages and then allows you to have all the players with you which is very important because in in my time most of the pumas used to play in europe so it was very difficult to set yeah. up a, a proper squad you know in like in a daily basis you know and, and i find that interesting because you know, it, it, it's not an unusual setup that goes for most countries. Obviously, there's a club setup. You you have a few players that go and find themselves overseas, but you don't see the results and the returns that you guys do have. Is it simply because of the fact that you guys uh, is? It, I guess maybe a better way of asking is: is the structure that you guys have secured solely by the fact that you guys have a lot of passion and like to play, or uh, is it? Uh, is there something that comes with those individual amateur clubs that allow the players to feel um, grounded enough to be able to develop and have the confidence to go overseas and play against South Africa and compete against the South Africa, but to be able to to kind of come back and and still develop at the same level? Well, it's, it's, it's a mix of things, like everything in life, nothing is, I mean, it's everything is a process and a long-term process. So that amateur culture uh, gives you what I mean, the passion of the players wanting to play for the nation. Right. They, they just want to play for them. They play in the best teams in Europe, but they want to come back and play for Argentina wow. uh, because they come from those clubs they know they are playing for their families for their friends and that's what those clubs gives you that passion and that belief and that that thing it's, it's an extra thing that you know those those guys they really want to play for the pumas and but nothing grows without a structure so you need you you need to have that uh, high performance setup mm -hmm. So they can really develop themselves. So now we are living this situation where the guys went back to Europe looking for good clubs and good competitions. But in the for the youngsters or, or for the guys we are developing, 
we have five centers, we call it academies. We, we divide the country in five different regions. Mm -hmm. We have five different academies, high performance academies. Each one of those academies, they have different centers in the provinces that allows you to follow the guys from when they are 13 or 14, 15 years old, and you, you can follow them. That allows you as well to all, all the coaching development, you, you can do it in that academy. And then today, those guys who really step up, they can play for the under 20s, they can play for the Pumas, they can play for Argentina A, and they can play as well for Pampas or Dogos, which are which is which are our franchises playing the South American League. Mm. So that allows you, you have all the Pumas playing in Europe, the, those 30 uh, elite guys playing for European clubs, but that allows right. you to have more than a hundred guys playing for the franchises. So they're playing for, for Dogos, for Pampas, and that allows you to have like more than a hundred players playing in good competitions and good level that will definitely get all the standards higher that makes a lot of sense uh and and it makes the country become less large because you have these central locations that basically are absorbing in that that those regional areas do you guys use that not just as a central location for the players and you might have said it but do you guys use it as a central location for coaching development as well yeah the thing is when you, when you have all the country working in the same way, that allows you to, to have just one line of coaching and to all those coaches coming from the clubs, they're really coachable because they can go to the academy and work together. So let's say a guy from my city in Mendoza, which is like 1,000 kilometers from Buenos Aires, they're they're learning and teaching the same things that the guys in Buenos Aires does. Right. Um, a guy from, I don't know, any, any, any athletes from, let's say, 18 years old, they're pro probably working in the same way the Pumas will do. That is very interesting because in this, in this path of growing, uh, this way gives you a common culture, a common way to work, which is very good because, mm -hmm. as you see in the sevens, they are, they are playing new guys and they just get into the team and they just know what they have to do mm -hmm. and they just can be straight away. So oh. that, that's a good thing to do, you know? That, that I like that. Okay, that, that makes, like I said, makes a ton of sense and 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 again you know the biggest issue is how do you shrink the country into a common uh, a common union well you make everybody basically a franchise of a franchise in essence you get we, what we did like uh maybe eight or ten years ago mm -hmm. our country is divided by provinces which is like in the u.s we get every state you got right. like 51 states we got 23 provinces in every single province we built a, a high performance center where we get at 15 years old the best players of each club those centers in the provinces they belong to an academy so we have 18 provinces working the same way yeah. and five high performance academy around the country yeah they are all doing the same thing they are all working the same way okay so then my next question is which is where it goes to like industry how does this stay funded so you know uh within uh you know within our rugby now you know most of it has come from obviously dues but paid to the individual clubs and then the issue ends up coming if a person is unable to pay you know you don't have access to either that talent or you know they they go off of their their way and this in particular hits within the youth rugby so where you're talking about being able to access kids third at 13 to start finding them you know it's much it's much more difficult to find that uh in the u.s and you start except for in specific areas and uh you now start hitting people at 
16, 18, 20, which is much later in the rugby development. So for a place for, for you guys using these academies, how is the how is the funding structure set where everybody is able to still get their able to function and do their job while being able to spot these talents in their regions and subsequently create the proper funnel for development? Well, it's, it's a good question because all the founding thing in, in our economy is really challenging. Uh, <laughs> it's not really my domain. It's not really my thing because I'm, I'm a coach. But I think he, the, what the, the Argentinian Rugby Union started doing it long, long time ago. It's, I think they get some funding for World Rugby. Mm -hmm. But then in the other side, you, get to, you need to have the, your own funding. So then it's when you need very good competition for the Pumas. Because the only way to get people in is, having a, 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 is the Pumas having, doing, doing a good work. Or the same thing happened when, he, when we have Hawares playing the Super Rugby. That's how you get money. That's how you get a product. So then you right. can go um, and use that money to get the academies. But it was a really long path. I mean, it wasn't easy. <laughs> and the, the academies at the beginning were really, um, really with a lot, a lot of effort. We, we didn't have this, the best things, the best setup. But we right. said, okay, we have to do it anyway. If we don't have the best pitch in the world or the best gym, we have to start anyway and we'll get better. So, and, and just to be clear, every academy or every high performance center, it will have like two or three people who get paid to do it. Yeah. But then the players, they will never get paid. Right. The players, they still play for their clubs, not professional, right. but they have two three times training sessions a week right. where they can really get their standards up but they don't get paid are they paying dues no they no. still pay for the clubs right they they only come to the academy if we call them right because they believe we believe they can do better so we call them and they have to keep studying they will never left school or university wherever they they will keep studying mm -hmm. they will keep playing for their clubs until they have an age where they can go to a franchise or to the sevens or the pumas or whatever they do nice so that like i said continues to make a lot of sense where it, it feels it doesn't put so much strain uh budgetary strain on any individual entity but those kids are still able to access more without having to put out necessarily outside of their travel to the academy itself. Exactly, exactly. but otherwise it's a huge country like, like for you guys. If you have to travel every time, it would be very difficult. And then what's happened is you get like 50% of our players, they are based in Buenos Aires. So what happened is it was very difficult to get talent from other cities. Mm -hmm. Now we are sure that if we get a good guy, a good player, in anywhere far away, we get him early enough. That, I love that. I love that. So now where you guys are at, and, and like I said before, you know, you guys have now established in Super Rugby Americas. You guys are establishing in Super Rugby. Uh, you guys established in Europe. Is there a plan that, that Argentina is going? Because I know... Um, uh, uh, Augustine has been very vocal about wanting to make sure that tier two particularly is getting its play time. And I feel like Argentina is really the leader while not a tier two team understands tier two problems, uh, that exist in, in the element. Uh, is there the plan of trying to increase, um, your, your range so that it can also come back to assist places like South America, uh, where you have like Brazil, a rising, you know, population and economy that can do a lot with rugby or what you see with Chile and Uruguay who have been able to increase their rugby. Is there is the reason why you're creating these elements help to just assist Argentina rugby or to be able to help South America overall? Yeah, for, from the coaching point of view, hmm. it's impossible to grow 
without the region going the same way. Right. If we want more competition for our players, you need to make all those countries around you get better. Right. So as you're seeing with Chile, Uruguay in the World Cup, or what Colombia, Brazil is doing, um, we need to grow together. You know, right. if, if they get better competition, if they get better players, it will be better competition for us. Right. If Argentina build uh, a bigger structure, that will definitely help Chile, Uruguay, and those countries, uh, as we are seeing in the Super Rugby Americas. I mean, they are growing and growing. And Argentina will be the lead country on that, but they, they are pushing back, they're pushing forward behind us, and they will definitely grow. I mean, it's, 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 um, it's very difficult to see this as just us. I think so. I think we all need to grow up together, the whole region. Again, what do they say? A rising tide lifts all boats. And this is where yeah. you, you come from with this. I, I know is, I see. There is, there is no other way to grow than competing. As a player, as a team, as a country, doesn't matter. The only way to grow or, or to get better is competition. Agreed. Agreed. So now that you we like i said we see all these elements i wonder do you foresee even a possibility where there might be a super league or maybe a, a european rugby championship kind of concept between uh north america and south america i know we've had competitions that are like um uh the america's championship cup and stuff like that that uh, Argentina has very lightly been a participant since they've done so much with the rugby championships, done so much with the Jaguars, but obviously with the Pampas and, and Dogos, that makes it easier to be able to work within the region and play at a high competition. But do you think that there would be a advantage both from the players' level? And I know you look at it from the coach, but I'm going to say even from a business standpoint, from a, a business uh, modeling where a URC where maybe – uh canada usa mexico the caribbean versus argentina and south america brazil and and creating a, a club urc in, in connection do you think that would be something that would be an additional benefit or even a capability from from the perspective you're seeing of growth no yeah i think it will be very if one day that happens it will be very good for all of us because the, the whole rugby, you, you, you got the whole world rugby is in Europe uh, because they have the history, they have the best teams and whatever. And you have all the Southern rugby with Australia, South, Af South Africa and New Zealand. And, and we need to get a stronger in America. Mm. Um, and the best way is to, is, I think, is to do it together. From the business point of view, from the coach's point of view, for the co from the competition point of view as well, I think is, is that's the way they are thinking about going, I think is the right way. No, and I, I, I see that, I see that. Last question for you uh, before I let you go, because I, I appreciate like you've set a base that I did not even realize that I, I think is something that we can really learn, especially here in the States when we talk about regionality, uh, because there, there are levels of academies that can work, but I don't think there's any centralized uh, location. Like the, the the major league rugby teams try and maybe present a little bit as, you know, a a a, a large base, but I don't think they're necessarily capable mm -hmm. of doing it on their own. On top of the fact that it may not necessarily uh, uh, agree with their exact objective, but do you feel like Argentina? It can be put into a position where they can lead more competition between these other nations where they can still get the amount of play but be able to grow despite the isolation from tier one in an ideal scenario for us i think it will be going back to something like when we have Hawars playing the super rugby because that allows you to have all the pumas all the best players in the country in a daily basis working with you. Mm -hmm. What happened with us was when we when that when that tournament finished, all the guys went back to Europe looking for clubs. 
But if you if you have the right competition, if you get to have another competition as we used to have Super Rugby, those guys will stay, and you will have your better players playing. I mean, in their country, working every day, um, and that's very important. Then, if you are, if you have all the Americas competition, you will have those guys like today playing for Dogos or Pampas. They can be playing with all the Americas. So then we have all the youngsters develop, developing in the academies, a first level, let's say tier two franchise level, having competition the whole year, and then you will have the best players playing for Super Rugby or something like that. So you will, you will really have an impact in your game. And then if you, instead of having two or three teams, you will have five, and then the growing will start. So that will be like kind of an ideal thing. Then, as we said before, it is not very easy to do it and it takes a lot of time. But if worldwide, the tier two is getting better competition, a more equal mm -hmm. competition, that will allow us to get there somehow. I, so, I, I love that. That that I, I like that, and you know I, that's that's where I like you said it becomes ideal because the spreading of talent into other areas and lack of the synchronization uh, uh, between players always ends up being a little bit of um, uh, a, a negative on on performance yeah. when it comes to the highest levels. I lied to you and I said that was my last question. I do have one more question for you. <laughs> um, one 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 thing that I always talk about is the way that. Um, Rugby's messaging gets presented to uh, casual crowds. I know within the community, we are very, very adamant about camaraderie and about the team and, of course, trying to bring players. And that, that family feeling is a lot of why we all play the game on top of just being able to run over people and hit people. Like, it, it's the combination, the social as well. In, in Argentina, um, do you guys do any special uh programming like for example we just the six nations full contact uh happening on netflix uh documentary not the first documentary in rugby to happen but on a platform this big it, it and that was promoted significant do you guys do things whether in programming or at least off off of the field um that helps casual viewers of uh casual spectators to be able to come to rugby games, whether it's a Jaguars game, a Pumas game, or even the individual clubs that helps them be able to educate and understand, or do you guys just rely on the word of mouth of club players to do it? Well, we, we actually do, do both things. I, I go back now to those clubs, rugby clubs we have. Yes. In those rugby clubs, it, it's really a social environment. You go there because you have your friends because you have your family in that club, not just to play rugby. So in my case, for example, I started going to my club with my old man, with my father, when I was five years old wow. and I didn't even play rugby. Every Saturday of my life, I knew that I'm going to the club. Yeah. Then once in the club, I decide if I want to play rugby or not. Right. But it's a place you go it's a place where you de develop people, not just rugby players. Right. So that's one thing I think Argentina is very good at. The other thing is with the Argentinian Rugby Union, we, we do a lot of things like kind of bring rugby to the people because we are in a very football country, everybody. Just a little bit, soccer, just a little bit of a yeah. football country. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like if you go to, to, to any town, people will be playing soccer. So what we do is we bring rugby to the people. We show them how it works. We play tag rugby with them, mm -hmm. uh, especially to places where we know that they don't know much about rugby or they believe rugby it's a, it's a difficult sport or whatever. So we, they, they have a lot of um, things happening on bringing rugby to the people and show them. Mm -hmm. And their results also help when you get the Pumas playing in good in the World Cup or when you get the sevens, top one in the world like it is right now, mm -hmm. uh, people start following up, start, start asking questions. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's a whole thing. I mean, 
you need to spread out the values so you get people coming to the clubs right and then you you have to bring rugby to the people as well and then at the same time you need those teams doing well worldwide so you got the on tv and people can see it it's, it's a mix of things oh that that again it, it's all connected and yeah. it, it all works within one big cycle and that that, that honestly that, <laughs> it's very simple a lot of work but it absolutely makes the most amount of sense uh yeah. when it's all said and done so oh no i i i definitely appreciate um the breakdown of that because again a lot of confusion i think a lot of us really watch argentina and see how significant they have been and how powerful they've been how close they are to championships so it, it's it's always a wonder to me why isn't this being copied so it's, it seems very copyable you know just yeah. with time yeah it's uh i mean it's 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 a fantastic sport if, if you think for many like every everybody can play rugby if you're big if you're tall if you're fast if you're slow we got a job for you right. if you come to rugby team you will have something to do doesn't matter how you how fast you are how big you are if you're tall you'll be a lock if you're not tall you play for the backs or whatever you know yeah. if you're a big man we need you as a prop so everybody can play rugby and then all the all the teamwork around there are tools that help for life not just for the sport right. so that's probably the message we need to spread out and in, in places where rugby is not that famous because it's 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 a unique sport. Imagine we we are hitting guys, we're hitting guys. It's a contact sport, and you need to do it always under the law. Right. You cannot cross that line. You can right. hit a guy hard enough without crossing that line. Right. It doesn't exist in any other sport. So it's 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 a temper kind of thing. It's it's a sport that that teach you a lot about life about keep going about how to resolve problems about camaraderie so that's probably the message we need to spread out more no i i love that i love that eusebio i want to thank you so much for taking the time if you can can you tell people where maybe they can find you or reach out to you if they are i mean if they end up in argentina or looking for a, a coach how can they re talk to you it's Euse, as my surname is E U S E. Guinea Su, like my surname, so it will be E U S E G U I N A Z U. Euse Guinea Su. I love it. I love it. You see, you. Thank you so much, and uh, we're definitely gonna bring it back because we got more to talk about in the future about your actual story. I uh, <laughs> hope you're ready. But <laughs> thanks for having me here. That was Eusebio Guinezu, uh, Guinezu. I hope you guys enjoyed, learned a whole lot from that. I know I absolutely did.